Welcome to A Look Ahead. We're delighted you've decided to join us. We study the Sabbath School lessons as prepared by the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And this series is a very interesting one on three cosmic messages. Cosmic. What does cosmic mean? Does that have to do with order? Well, it should. You think it, it does. Would, but I think it's misapplied just like apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> well, in this case, I think cosmic is intended to mean universe-wide. The Seal of God and the Mark of the Beast is the title of this lesson, like our last lesson, but th that was part one. Now we're looking at part two. And this is uh, lesson number 12 for June 17 of 2023. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Our wonderful Father, once again we want to thank you for giving us this clear guidance, albeit in symbolic terms sometimes, uh, about what we can expect to happen just before you come again. May we be prepared, is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So in this lesson, we'll be looking at quotations documenting many historical events because these are the things that lead up to the second coming. Jim? From the Bible Study Guide. In the 15th century, the Piedmont Valleys, high in the Alps of northern Italy, were home to the Waldenses, a people determined to stay faithful to the understanding of the Bible. As a result of their steadfast loyalty to Christ, they were fiercely persecuted. In A.D. 1488, the Waldenses in the Valley of Lois, or Lois, Loisi, or what? Yeah, Lois. Um, were brutally murdered by the Roman Church for their faith. Another wave of persecution came in the 17th century, and when the Duke of Savoy sent an army of 8,000 into their territory and demanded that the local populace quarter his troops in their homes, they did as he, excuse me, as he requested. But this was a strategy to give the soldiers easy access to their victims. On April, 4, April 24, 1655, at 4 a.m., a signal was given for the massacre to begin. This time, the death toll was more than 4,000 from the Bible Study Guide for Sabbath, June 4. Imagine following God, government orders for you to take care of soldiers to stay in your house, and bam, at 4 o'clock in the morning, they jump up and kill all of you. We spent several days in the valley, and it's yeah. sad. It's really, truly sad what yeah. these folk went through. How about, how about over there in Rwanda, what, 10, yeah. 20 years ago with, with the, on Sabbath morning? 1992 they, or something like that, 94. Yeah. I mean, yeah, absolutely. I've, with a country, my understanding, they were about 95% Christian. Oh, yeah. So what brand of Christianity do yeah. they have? There's a medical school, Adventist medical school in Rwanda today. So now Advent is there, right? Yeah, now there is. Yes. Yeah. There were a lot of Seventh Day Adventists yes. in Rwanda. Now yeah. that's what I was on both sides. That's what I was yeah. alluding to without getting too specific. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, the pilgrims were persecuted in England. Their pastor was killed, so they moved to Holland. Things were still bad, so they chartered two boats to take them to America. One of the boats was soon leaking so badly that they turned back to Holland and crowded all of them into a single boat, the Mayflower. Half of them died within the first year of their sailing. All of this happened in the midst of the 1260 years of papal domination of Europe. I mean, pretty, pretty sad, huh? An important prophecy is documented repeatedly in the book of Daniel and in several locations in the book of Revelation. Notice these interesting parallel passages. Jennifer? Revelation 13, 5. The beast was allowed to make proud claims which were insulting to God, and it was permitted to have authority for 42 months. From uh, American Bible Society, the Good News. Okay. 40, 42 months. Yeah. How long is that? Well, we won't get into, we, we could spend hours discussing the ancient um, chronology methods of different ways they, they numbered their months and days and so forth but basically they all had 30 day uh, at least some of their months were 30 days long most of them were 30 days long so if you take 42 times 30 what do you get? 
1260. Okay, reading on. Revelation 12, 6, 14. The woman fled to the desert, to a place God had prepared for her, where she will be taken care of for 1,260 days. She was given the two wings of a large eagle in order to fly to her place in the desert, where she will be taken care of for three and a half years, safe from the dragon's attack. Okay, those ancient calendars had 360 days as a year. So three and a half times mm -hmm. 360, guess what you get? 1,260. Okay, in Daniel 7. Daniel 7, 25, he will speak against the supreme God and oppress God's people. He will try to change their religious laws and festivals, and God's people will be under his power for three and a half years. Wow. So all those different methods of saying the same thing. Three and a half years is the same as 42 months, is the same as 1260 days. Mm -hmm. So they're, did they, you, th you think God purposely didn't use the same term throughout, or? We're gonna talk about that a little bit. You know, we would say three years and six months. No, he didn't say three years and six months because that would have fouled up the symbolism. He said three and a half years. We'll, 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 we'll look at that in a moment. Mm -hmm. A very important principle in understanding how to interpret biblical prophecy is the year-day principle. Numbers 14, 34. You will suffer the consequences of your sin for 40 years. One year for each of the 40 days you spent exploring the land, that is, Canaan, when they sent the spies into Canaan. Yeah. You will know what it means to have me against you. Good News Bible. And Ezekiel 4, 6. When you finish that, turn over on your right side and suffer for the guilt of Judah for 40 days one day for each year of their punishment. Good News Bible. Okay, so why does it, what's that all about? Well, the year-day principle was proven to be correct and accurate by its interpretation of Daniel 9, 24 to 27. That's a prophecy which has 70 weeks, which would be 490 days, and if you work it out, it comes out as exactly right. Exactly right. Mm -hmm. pointing to the time of Christ's anointing, his baptism, and then his crucifixion, and finally the time when the gospel was sent to the Gentiles. Each one of those things is nailed, I mean, to the exact month. Mm -hmm. These dates were precisely prophesied and fit into the 490-year prophecy of Daniel 9, 24 through 27. So turning back to speak the, about the 1260-day prophecy, notice these historical notes. Myra? Mm -hmm from the Bible study guide. In the fourth century, the Roman Emperor Constantine legalized Christianity throughout the empire. When he moved his capital in AD 330 to Byzantium. Byzantium. Byzantium, to unite the eastern and the western parts of his empire, it left a leadership vacuum in Rome. The now let me, let me interrupt there for just a second. Prior to Constantine's action, how were, how were Christians treated? They were persecuted. If you did not offer, take some, a handful of incense and put it on an altar burning before Caesar as, as your God, you died. And then suddenly, all of a sudden, Christianity is at least legal, if not, you know, encouraged. Or okay. required. Well, they weren't quite ready for that yet. Go ahead, Myra. Okay. The Pope then filled this void. He became not only a powerful religious leader, but also a political force to be reckoned with in Europe. In AD 538, Justinian, Justinian the pagan Roman emperor, officially granted the Roman bishop the role of the defender of the faith. The medieval church exercised great influence from A.D. 538 to A.D. 1798, including in the terrible persecution mentioned in the introduction to this study, Napoleon General Berthier. Berthier. Napoleon's General Berthier 
took the Pope captive in A.D. 1798 in the exact fulfillment of the prophecy. Wow. Berthier and his army captured Pope Pi Pius mm -hmm. VI. Pope Pius VI, yeah. And unceremoniously removed him from the papal throne. I'm sure that didn't go over well. We were, we were there a few years ago, weren't we? Yes. Yeah. Um, the blow of the of the papacy would the blow to the papacy was serious, but according to Revelation thirteen twelve, the deadly wound would be healed, and the world would hear more from this power, a lot more. It's would you in believe? The Bible study guide for Sunday, June eleven. What can we expect from that healed beast? Revelation chapter thirteen verse twelve is exercises all the authority of the first beast on its behalf and it makes the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast whose mortal bone had been healed. Mm. Okay, so the first beast gets all of his authority from the devil and then he tells us, okay, if you follow my guide, you will worship the devil himself. And so now the second beast comes along and says, worship the first beast, which in turn means worship the devil. The devil. Okay. The prophecy was first given to Daniel about 550 years before Christ was born. He predicted the fall of the Pope in 1798 at the end of the 1260 year prophecy, which began in 538 BC. AD. So, AD. I'm sorry, 538 AD. That prophecy covered 550 years plus 1798 years for a total of 2,348 years. God was able to predict exactly that many years in advance. Mm -hmm. Wow. Satan is a very clever enemy. He does not come out in the open to do his work. If he did, the people would identify him. He works through human agencies. In, the, in this case, specifically, he acted through the papacy. 2 Thessalonians 2, 3 to 4, and 9 through 12. Let no one deceive you in any way, for that day will not come unless the rebellion comes first, and the lawless one is revealed, the one destined for destruction. He opposes and exalts himself above every so-called God or object of worship, so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, declare himself, declaring himself to be what? God. God. The coming of the lawless one is apparent in the working of Satan, who uses all power, signs, lying wonders, and every kind of de wicked deceit, deception for those who are perishing because they um, refuse to love the truth and so be saved. For this reason, God sends them a powerful delusion, leading them to believe what is false, so that all who have not believed the truth but, but look, took pleasure in the unrighteousness will be condemned. So what's that saying? We don't, we don't like to think that God is sending powerful uh, things to, to deceive people. He lets people be deceived. People well, don't want to listen, so they're going to be, they're going to hear something. Okay. <laughs> so there's only two. Cho ultimately, there's only two choices. And if you're rejecting God, what's left? You're going to be listening to something. Yep. Okay, Jim from the SDA Bible Commentary. A comparison of, with Daniel's prophecy of the blasphemous power that succeeds that of pagan Rome. And with John's word picture of the le leopard-like beast reveals many similarities between the three descriptions of the horn, the beast power, and the lawless one. This leads us to the conclusion that Daniel Paul and John are speaking of the same power, that is, the papacy, from the SDA Bible Commentary, Volume 7, page 271. Remember our previous studies suggesting that the Christian church that began as a beautiful woman dressed in white gradually became corrupted and fell away, turning into the woman wearing scarlet and purple, riding on a beast representing the devil himself in Revelation 17. Here's the faithful church, and it just gradually morphs, gradually morphs, gradually changed, until the book of Revelation tells us specifically this woman, who still claims to be the church of, you know, 
the faithful church is riding on the dragon. And that dragon, who is that? The devil. That's the devil. So, I mean... I uh, just wanted to point this out, that uh, uh, as the omen changed into... So did very gradually, keeping of the Sabbath gradually changed over time. Yep. So as a result of this, God must call his faithful people out of Babylon, as in Revelation 18, 4. Jennifer? Then I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, so that you do not take part in her sins, and so that you do not share in her plagues. The New Revised Standard Version. Okay, we must not assume that everyone who's a Roman Catholic understands and believes in these ideas. Many who are in the Roman Catholic community are faithful members of God's church, but are deceived in following what they best they know. We must treat them as we would want to be treated. And how is that, Gordon? As, as fellow Christians. Mm-hmm. Matthew seven twelve. do for others what you want them to do for you, is what Jesus said. Mm -hmm. This is the meaning of the law of Moses and of the teachings of the prophets. Good News Bible. Have you ever tried to go back in the Old Testament and see where you find this command, this expression? Mm -hmm. That's a, that's a day-long project for you sometime. Remember the, the guy, the story goes with the uh, rabbis. Uh, the guy was searching, I guess he came to, what was it, uh, Shimei, and then he went to Hillel, to, and they asked him to, he asked, tell us the whole law while standing on one foot. <laughs> and he went, finally went up at Hillel, and he says, uh, don't do to somebody what you wouldn't want to have done to yourself, and all the rest is commentary. I see. <laughs> Yeah, well, that but don't, it, do, now, don't do this. It says do unto others. Yeah, just, see, this is a proactive stuff. Exactly, completely different. The old thing that don't do it to your brother, what you don't want him to do to you. That's what every mom says to her kids. Yeah. But it, it still isn't up, a step up to yeah. the way the world operates. Yeah, yeah, it is. But, I mean, Jesus goes way beyond. You know, we just read it there. What does it say? Do for others. Do for others what you want them to yeah, do for you. That's proactive. It's proactive. Very, very different. Okay. Revelation 13, 3 and 4 and 7 and 8. One of the heads of the beast seemed to have been fatally wounded, but the wound had healed. The whole earth was amazed and followed the beast. Everyone worshipped the dragon because he had given his authority to the beast. Okay, will the world know that they're worshiping the dragon, the devil? No. No. Most of them not, if some will. Yeah. Okay. Um, where was I? They worshiped. They worshiped the dragon because he had given his authority to the beast. They worshiped the beast also saying, who is like the beast? Who can fight against it? It was allowed to fight against God's people and defeat them. And it was given the authority over every tribe, nation, language, and race. All people living on earth will worship it, except those whose names are written before the creation of the world in the book of the living, which belongs to the lamb that was killed. Good News Bible. Wow. As we know, Satan works through human agencies. He does not come out and reveal himself. So will there ever be a future, quote, moral leader who appears to be faithful and true and that the world can depend upon? Surveys reveal a deep lack of trust in institutions and governments. Millions wonder, why is there someone who is morally fit to lead the world? By the way, today the world uh, leaders are looking at one person as a moral leader. Where is there someone who is morally fit to lead the world? Revelation's prophecies identify the beast power of the world as the one who, under the auspices of the religious political union, will be the power believed to fit all this role. By the way, they have already identified. Yeah. Well, I tell you, um, 
all you have to read is the newspapers. Yes. Yesterday, I was looking on my computer and there was an article, a survey done, but under, it was being reported on the Wall Street Journal. I've forgotten exactly which organization did it. It says, in the last, I think it's 20, 30 years, the um, respect for religion has gone from 60% of the American population to 30%. And it also said it's about the same for, for patriotism. patriotism. Patriotism, way up there, 60 or 70% down to about 30 or 40%. People don't trust anything, they don't believe in anything. But both the political and religious leaders they're meeting in Davos, Switzerland. Yeah. You know? Let's, Klaus Schwab and his body. There you are. Right, right, right. So both religious and political leaders uh, have one person in mind, and that's the Pope, that he's mm -hmm. their relig uh, religious leader. Who else do they have to choose? Well, Revelation 17, 12 to 14. The ten horns you saw are ten kings who have not yet begun to rule but he will be given authority to rule his kings for one hour with the beast. One hour with the beast. These ten all have the same purpose and they give their power and authority to the beast. They will fight against the lamb, but the lamb together with his called, chosen, and faithful followers will defeat them because he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. That's... Rule as kings for one hour with the beast. Yeah. If. A day, a is prophetic a year. day is a year, then one, one hour, hour is, is two about weeks. About two weeks. Two weeks, right. Yeah. Is that literal? Wow. <laughs> okay, the Bible study guide. Jim, I think that's yours. There are three significant points John makes in this passage. First, the political powers have one mind and give their, can we give their power and authority to the beast. Second, this conglomerate of error makes war against Jesus the Lamb. Third, in Earth's last, excuse me, third, in Earth's last war, Christ and his followers are triumphant, and the beast does not win. Jesus does. Have you ever wondered? what strategy the devil might use to unite the nations? History often repeats itself. We discover valuable lessons from the collapse of the Roman Empire. When the Germanic invasion from the north ravaged Western Europe, the Roman Emperor Constantine turned to religion. The authority of the church combined with the power of the state became the very instrument Constantine needed. The continual strengthening of the sanctity of Sunday in the fourth century was calculated political and religious move to calculated was a calculated, a calculated I was looking for the letter A, a religious, uh, religious move to unite the empire at the time of crisis. Constantine wanted his empire united and the Roman church wanted it converted. The renowned historian Arthur Weigel state, states a real, excuse me, it clearly. The church made a sacred day of Sunday, largely because it was the weekly festival of the sun, for it was the definite Christian policy to take over the pagan festivals endeared to the people by tradition and gave them Christian significance. That is from the book Paganism and Our Christianity from G.P. Putnam's Son, 1928, almost yeah. 100 years ago. At the time of the great crisis, when all the world is scared, hurting, and, and p fearful, people will be desperate for someone to bring some stability and protection. This is how tyranny has arisen in the past, and there's no re reason to think that it would, could not happen again. According to prophecy, something will bring about these final events from the Bible Study Guide for June 13. Wow. <laughs> the Bible speaks about a seal of God and a mark of the beast. What do these things mean, Jennifer? Revelation 14, 9. A third angel followed the first two, saying in a loud voice, Whoever worships the beast and its image and receives the mark on their forehead or on their hand. Okay. And then Revelation 14, 12. This, this calls... This is from a different translation to see if that helps us understand. Okay. 
This calls for endurance on the part of God's people, those who obey God's commandments and are faithful to Jesus. I'm sorry, that's just the following verse, that's not a different translation. Yes. In ancient Israel, God told them to do something similar. Deuteronomy 6, verses 8 and 9, tie them on your arms and wear them on your foreheads as a reminder. Write them on the doorposts of your houses and on your gates. And this is copies are, of the law. These are commands from God, yes. Deuteron but uh, he's talking about copies of the law. Yeah. At least that's what they literally said. Deuteronomy eleven eighteen. remember these commands and cherish them. Tie them on your arms and wear them on your foreheads as a reminder. Good News Bible. Yeah. It's interesting that not too long ago there was an archaeologist, a world famous archaeologist, digging around Jerusalem. I won't go into all the story, but there was a young boy that was there offering his free services to see if he could help. And so the archaeologist sent him off to clean up a, a tomb area that they had finished working on, everything was like this. And somehow or other, this kid got a hold of a hammer and he was digging around in this thing and he pounded on the floor. He said, oh, that sounds like that's hollow. And he picked up something and lo and behold, inside there was down a whole bunch of, of jars with things on it and so forth like this anyway. To make a long story short, one of those jars contained two little silver scrolls with a quotation from the Book of Numbers, which is part of what this is talking about here that, I mean, this is clear back from like 600 copies of the Bible, something from the Bible, 600, 700 years before the times of Christ. Mm -hmm. The oldest extra biblical quotation from the Bible. So before the Babylonian captivity? Mm -hmm. That's about the last book was written in the Old Testament. Yeah. Right? About 600 BC. No, four, 400, 400, the last book of the, okay. was four, the, the 600 BC would be uh, the time of the Babylonian, Babylonian captivity. Invasion, right? yeah. yeah. Okay, but these future seals we are talking about here, the, the seal of God and the mark of the beast, are apparently not visible except to angels. And what does the Sabbath have to do with the seal of God? Well, from the Bible study guide, it says, one group worships the beast, and one keeps the commandments of God, which includes the fourth, the one commandment, <clears throat> the beast power thought to change, and has the faith of Jesus. That's the contrast. Working through the sea and the land beasts, the devil attempts to undermine God's authority by attacking the heart of worship, namely the Sabbath. The mark of the beast is placed either in the forehead or the hand. The forehead is a symbol of the mind, where the conscience, reason, and judgment are located. The hand, in contrast, is a symbol of the actions and deeds. It's from the Bible Study Guide for Wednesday, June 15. Okay, Charles? Uh, it's right after that. It's, it's okay. Those who honor the Bible Sabbath will be denounced as enemies of law and order, as breaking down the moral restraints of the society, causing anarchy and corruption, and calling down the judgments of God upon the earth. Their conscientious scruples will be pronounced will be obstinacy. obstinacy, stubbornness, and contempt and of authority they will be accused of disaffection toward the government. Ministers who denied the obligation of the divine law will present from the pulpit the duty of yielding, yielding obedience to the civil authorities as ordained of God. In legislative halls and courts of justice, commandment keepers will be misrepresented and condemned a uh, justice commandment. A false, a false coloring. A uh, uh, false coloring will be given to their words. The worst construction will be put upon their motives. Ellen White, Great Controversy, 5, 
for nine, five minutes. Okay, think about this picture. We will be arrested, taken to court, and then everything we have said is going to be twisted in a way to make it sound wrong. To, it is a con, con, condemnation. But we will need to know the scriptures very well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, picking another spot, quoting from Catholics, the Church of Rome claims that Sunday is the mark of its ecclesiastical authority. Quote, of course the Catholic Church claims that the change was her act, and the act is a mark of her ecclesiastical power and authority in religious matters. American Catholic Quarterly Review, January 1883. Revelation predicts that in the future, at a time in international crisis, a time of international crisis, our world will face some kind of radical political, social, religious, and moral transformation in which Sunday keeping will be enforced and then will become the mark of the beast. So is, the, is Sunday keeping the mark of the beast today? No. Not yet. It's not clear. But I'm so convinced that we're not too far. No. Perhaps years, few years. Yeah. Again, how all this unfolds, we have not been told. Scripture gives us only broad outlines, but enough to show us that the great controversy is going to climax around the issue of worshiping either the beast or the creator, and that the Seventh-day Sabbath will play a central role role for Wednesday, June 14. So if we want to be on God's side, we need to be making choices for that side every day and all that we do. Remember these words from our previous study. It is a law, both of the intellectual and the spiritual nature that by beholding we become changed. The mind gradually adapts itself to the subjects of which it is allowed to dwell. It becomes assimilated to that which it is accustomed to love and reverence. Man will never rise higher than his standard of purity or goodness or truth. If self, self is his loftiest ideal, he will never attain to anything more exalted. Rather, he will constantly sink lower and lower. The grace of God alone has power to exalt man. Left to himself, his course must inevitably be downward. Great Controversy 555. Jim, you want to take that next one? Well, the Bible study guide. Even now, perhaps the stage is, bearing, is being set for this impending persecution. On June 6, 2012, Pope Benedict XVI made an urgent appeal to more than 15,000 people gathered in St. Peter's Square in Rome that Sunday must be a day of rest for any, everyone so people can be free to be with their families and with God. By defending Sunday, one defends human freedom. This isn't, of course... That's his quote. Yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, quote. This isn't, of course, the same thing as demanding that others keep this day, as opposed to the biblical Sabbath, but it does show that the idea of Sunday is as the, quote, day of rest, is definitely a real issue. Sooner or later, laws will be passed and those who conscientiously follow the word of God and keep the true Sabbath will be labeled as opposing society's best interest from the Bible study guide for June 15. Have we ever heard anything like that before? Uh, if I may add this more, I, I ask everyone to go and read Laudato Si. Mm -hmm. Praise be to you. This is by Pope Francis. He wants between 2026 and 2027 to have a, a, a jubilee year of Sabbath every Sunday. Yeah. It's there. It's there. Yeah. Just not, not, not long ago, it came out. Yes. So if Sunday will ultimately be the mark of the beast, what is the seal of God? Exodus. Sabbath. Mm -hmm. So Sabbath, Exodus 20, verses 8 to 11. Observe the Sabbath and keep it holy. You have six days in which to do your work, but the seventh day is a day of rest dedicated to me. On that day, no one is to work, neither you, your children, your slaves, your animals, nor the foreigners who live in your country. In six days, I, the Lord, made the earth, the sky, the sea, and everything in them. But on the seventh day, I rested. That is why I, the Lord, blessed the Sabbath and made it holy. Good mm. news, Bible. 
Okay. From the Bible Study Guide, the fourth commandment contains three elements of an authentic seal. First, there is the name of the sealer, the Lord your God. Second, there is the title of the sealer, the Lord who made or the creator. And third, there is the territory of the sealer, the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them. According to Revelation 7, 1 and 2, the seal of God is placed only on our foreheads as a symbol of our minds. Jesus respects our freedom of choice. He invites us to let him shape our minds by his Holy Spirit so that we cannot be moved from the anchor of our faith in the word of God. Thus we understand that the faithful are those who keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. And included in those commandments is the fourth, the one commandment, the beast power thought to change, as per Daniel 7.25, from the Sabbath School Bible Study Guide for Thursday. My Revelation 7, verse 1 and 2 says, After this I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds, so that no wind should blow on the earth or the sea or against any tree. And I saw another angel holding up coming, from, coming up from the east with a seal of the living God. He called out in a loud voice to the four angels to whom God had given the power to damage the earth and the sea. That's from the Good News Bible. Okay. Continuing on, uh, Bible study guide says the conditions can what conditions can you see currently developing that could potentially lead to the re restrictions of our religious liberty what obstacles remain as well it looks like we might have time just take a moment to read Ezekiel 9 1 to 6 here's what happened just before the city of Jerusalem was totally destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar his, uh, his third conquest of the city and what God said to Ezekiel to the people back in Jerusalem. Um, then I heard God shout, come here you men who are going to punish the city, bring your weapons with you. At once six men came from the outer, outer north gate of the temple, each one carrying a weapon. With them was a man dressed in linen clothes carrying something to write with. They all came and stood by the bronze altar. That's, of course, in the temple courtyard. Then the dazzling light of the Lord, of the presence of the God of Israel rose up from the winged air creatures where it had been and moved to the entrance of the temple. What's this dazzling light of the presence of the Lord? What's that? It's otherwise known as the Shekinah. That's supposed to be located where? In the, uh, between the ark, the... In the most holy place. In the most holy place. So now it's come out. Go th the Lord called to the man dressed in linen, go through the whole city of Jerusalem and put a mark on the forehead of everyone who is distressed and troubled because of all the disgusting things being done in the city. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Put a mark on everyone who's doing what? Who's distressed. Things. Because of what? Everything that's happening in the city. Could that have any implications for us? And I heard God say to the other men, follow him to the city and kill. Spare no one. Have mercy on no one. Kill the old men, young men, young women, mothers and children. But don't touch anyone who has the mark on his forehead. Start here at my temple. So they began with the leaders who were standing there at the temple. Could that ever happen again? That's the, that's the Old Testament thing for, for this, what we just read. Is that referring to the four winds? Yeah. Well, this is, this is the Old Testament sample Version. that's now being carried into, because you see, because the angel goes around and he marks the faithful, and then other people come and they destroy the ones who are not marked. That's exactly what happened, what was, what was in symbolism. I don't know exactly how it was carried out literally, but in symbolism, that's what happened to, and to, to the Jews back before Jerusalem was finally destroyed. 
Charles, you want to read what conditions can you see currently? One Protestantism, is that what? Bible study guide. 19. Oh, Philip 19. Yeah, well, I would. It's underneath Revelation. Okay. What conditions can you see currently developing in, that could potentially lead to the restriction of our religious liberty? What obstacles remain as well? Okay. What would you answer if someone asked you that? Don't everybody talk at the same time? <laughs> well, in considering that, and answering that, consider one, the outlawing of cash as a medium of financial exchange. Digital currency? A digital currency. Now, there are ways to get around this, but what's going to happen when we pass the offering plate at church? You pass a credit card reader. Pass the credit card reader, huh? And okay. did we not see during COVID our churches closed? Yes. Our not only that, if all transactions have to be done digitally, who can trace them? Only the government. Everything, they can the trace least, everything. The least. Yes. Okay, the number two, the rise of cooperation among rogue and communistic governments doing everything they can to replace the United States as a dominant player in the financial world. These nations are all opposed to the God of the Bible. I wonder what nations that would be. Mm -hmm. You're seeing this, and I mean, and every day almost, you're hearing of something on, like just today, just this evening before I came, Putin is up there standing and says, I will no longer abide by any of the treaties I have agreed to in the past. I'm going to, if I want to use uh, nuclear weapons to accomplish my goals, I will just do it. Out of total chaos will be total control. Mm -hmm. Three, the progress of the United States government toward controlling more and more of our lives and what affects us. We don't want anybody to get away with any kind of transactions that we can't record because they might be cheating on their taxes. Now, having said all of that, I have to be honest to say that the rationale will be given in, for doing this is that the criminals do their business with cash. So if you eliminate cash as a means of doing business, that makes it harder for the criminals. Okay? If you don't have cash changing hands for drugs, for smuggling, for prostitution, for everything else, then... What if the, digi what if the criminals handle the digital currency? Then what happens? There you go. <laughs> well, they will, but they... Yes. <laughs> but it theoretically would be possible for the government to say, okay, that, many, that money went from here to there to there. We know exactly what, and we can guess very clearly what it was used for. And we can tax it. And we can tax it. The fact is we are going home quicker yeah. than we think. Yeah. That's the beauty. In order for Satan to succeed in his efforts to deceive almost the entire world, he must have several different organizations toward, uh, working together toward a common goal. And what are those? When Protestantism shall stretch your hand across the gulf to grasp the hand of the Roman power, when she shall reach over the abyss to clasp hands with spiritualism, when under the influence of this threefold union, our country, the United States, shall repudiate every principle of its constitution as a Protestant and Republican government, and we just talked about the polls that said that we just lost 50% of our respect for Protestantism, and shall make provision for the propagation of papal falsehoods and delusions, then we may know that the time has come for the marvelous working of Satan and that the end is near. Charles, what does that say? The end is near, like you've suggested, right? 
Yes, sir. Okay, no, Testimonies for the Church, Volume 5, 451. And then, Jim, it's your turn. Bible Study Guide. We have tended to overlook the fact that Sunday is the day of worship of opposing forces. In the story, the book of Revelation, in the storyline of the book of Revelation, Sunday is an extremely important symbol, revealing the unbelievable craftiness and sophistry of the dragon. This change of God's law expressed, excuse me, expresses one simple action, the very essence of the hatred of the dragon against God in the cosmic conflict. Its simplicity is highly deceptive. The dragon has sought to usurp God's place in the cosmos by depicting himself as the one object, excuse me, as the true object of worship and arguing that God's law is unjust, that it should be changed. The dragon changed the law at the juncture within the Decalogue where God is identified as the creator and redeemer, the only one worthy of trust, excuse me, of worship, Exodus 20, verses 8 to 11, and so forth. The change of the law manifests not only the dragon's hatred of the, for the will of God, the Lord, for the will of the Lord, that is law, but it is also his attempt to usurp God's place in becoming the object of worship. The universalization of this change in the law would assure him victory from Angel Man Manuel yep. Rodriguez, the closing of the cosmic conflict. Yeah. From the Bible study. If account. he could get almost the entire world to worship on the day celebrating his achievements. Wow. Talk as, about the ultimate self-centeredness, huh? Yeah. As we study the events that will lead up to the second coming of Jesus Christ, we must avoid two extremes. One, getting so concerned that we try to set dates. That type of fanaticism is never helpful. And two, falling into a lackadaisical attitude, believing that what is predicted in the Bible just doesn't seem possible even to the current, doesn't seem possible given the current state of the world. Jennifer? In the Bible study guide, another important principle of prophetic interpretation is the link between the prophecies of Daniel and Revelation. Mm -hmm. The little horn power of Daniel 7, the quote, man of sin of 2 Thess Thessalonians 2, and the beast from the sea in Revelation 13 represent the same oppressive power that persecuted God's people during the Middle Ages, the papacy. In our study, we will discover how the beast from the sea in Revelation 13 also opposes and oppresses God's last day people who, quote, keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus, end quote. This is from the Bible study guy. Yeah. Those who have been, been Seventh-day Adventists for much of their lives might feel that this is a repetition of something they have heard many times. Mm -hmm. However, we should notice... From Ellen White, written in 1900, when the books of Daniel and Revelation are better understood, believers will have an entirely different religious experience. Wow. They will be given such glimpses of the open gates of heaven that heart and mind will be impressed in regard to the character of all, the character all must develop in order to realize the blessedness which is to be the reward of the pure in heart. And that's in manuscript releases and testimonies to the ministers, etc. So Ellen White was writing a letter from Australia to be sent to, Review published Herald. in the Review and Herald. Didn't okay. get there, did it? Well, I'd have to go and check it to see, but I don't think so. Yeah. Myra? Yes, from the Bible Study Guide. Until the 19th century, most students of the apocalyptic books, Daniel and Revelation, used the historicist method to interpret the prophecies of these books. One of the main pillars of the historicist method is the day year-day principle, which says that a day in apocalyptic, boy, I've apocalyptic. that word, uh, time prophesies, prophecies represents a year. So a day equals a year, or represents a year. During the 19th century, the historicist method was slowly replaced by the preterist, 
mm -hmm. and futurist systems of interpretation, both which deny the year-day principle. Preterists place the most place most of the prophecies into the past up to the time of the Roman Empire. Futurists place most of them into the future, specifically into the last seven years between the secret rapture and the second advent. Yeah, that's a, it's a, they've got some real fancy footwork going through yeah. the Bible, claiming that certain things are going to happen in the last year before Jesus comes, and a bunch of these prophecies are shoved into that seven-year period. May I make a quick comment? Yeah. Um, I know we're we'll pressed for time, but um, when the Protestants came up, the Pope had a problem in his hand that he could not handle. So he, uh, the Jesuit order came, Society of Jesus. In no time, Alcazar of uh, Spain, this is a Jesuit, he came up with the preterist uh, teaching. Mm -hmm. And perhaps half of the Protestants are going in the preterist teaching that Antichrist was before Christ. Okay. Yeah. Now the, few, the, the, I um, oh, who's the other one? Um, Alcazar and the other one was um, another Pope. Yeah. He, he says uh, the future is, is, is and that now that so many, half of the um, uh, Protestants are going with this teaching yeah. and they're happy. I mean, pro, um, the, the Jesuits are very happy. They don't care. Yeah. as long as they have confused the Protestants. Notice these interesting comments from the time of the early years of Ellen White regarding the interpretation of Bible prophecies. Well, Charles, I think it's me? your turn. That's Are we here? Yeah. Okay. The article by Help. Pandel. Pandel um, also makes this telling point According to the context, the expressions time, times, and half a time, Daniel 7, 25, Revelation, and 12, 7, Revelation 12, 14, 40 years, month, 42, 42 months, um, and 1,260 days, that's in Revelation 11, 3, 12, 6, all apply to the same time period. But the natural expression, uh, three years and six months, is not used once. So, I, I talked about that earlier. So, so these things are used just specifically so they can be used as a code. Because if you said it just the usual way, it wouldn't work. The Holy Spirit seems in a manner to exhaust all the phrases by which the interval could be expressed. Exceeding always, that excluding. excluding always one form which would be used, of course, in ordinary writing. And it used invariably in scripture on other occasions to denote the literal period. This variation is most significant as we accept the year day system, but quite inexplicable in the other view. Yeah. In the other view. This okay. is by Thomas R. Brooks. Mm -hmm. Look again at the 1260 year period. How was 538 AD determined to be the start? The 1260 prophetic days, the time, times, and half a time, or 42 months of Daniel Revelation, equals 1260 years. Commenting on this prophetic period, the SDA Bible Commentary states the prophetic period of the Little Horn began in AD 538 when the Ostrogoths abandoned the siege of Rome and the Bishop of Rome, released from Arian control, was free to exercise the prerogatives of Justinian's decree of 533 and thenceforth to increase the authority of the Holy See. There's a lot going on in there. Uh, the Pope actually took authority, a sword and other things like this, and led his army out, and these other people sort of ran away and so the Pope says, oh, I can exercise my that authority. That was Vigilus, probably. What? Vigilus. Oh, I don't remember what his, which name I it was. That's but it could one, have been, yeah. yeah 538. Okay. Exactly 1260 years later, 1798, 
The spectacular victories of the armies of Napoleon in Italy placed the Pope at the mercy of the French Revolutionary Government, which now advised him that the Roman religion would always be the irreconcilable enemy of the Republic, and added that there is, there is one thing even more essential to the atonement, to the attainment of the end desired, and that is to destroy, if possible, the center of unity of the Roman Church. And it is for you who unite in your person the most distinguished qualities of the general and of the enlightened politician to realize this aim if you consider it practicable. That's a long, expensive way for Napoleon to tell his general, go down there and conquer the, the Pope. So in response to these instructions and at the command of Napoleon, General Berthier with the French army entered Rome, proclaimed the political rule of the papacy at an end, and took the Pope prisoner, carrying him off to France, where he died in exile. And that's quoted in our Bible study guide. According to, well, next, yes, that's, where are we? Jim. According to Romans verse, uh, chapter 4, verse 11, a sign and a seal are interchangeable. Seals were well known in the ancient world. They used to an authentic Doc, excuse me, we're used in authenticate documents. To authenticate documents. I'm sorry, yeah, you're right. They were also a sign of ownership. Seals were often made of wax or stamped on freshly formed clay. Of all the commandments, the Sabbath is the only one that qualifies as a seal of God. It contains the name, the title, the domain of the love giver. This is from Dr. Ger P. Gerhard Damstig. The Sabbath commandment can therefore be considered a seal because it, it is the only one and all the ten in which are found the name of the title of the lawgiver is the only one that shows by whom, excuse me, by whose authority and the law is given. Thus it contains a seal of God affixed to this to his law as evidence of the authentic, authenticity and binding force from the Patriarchs and Prophets, page 307. The Sabbath helps to give the Ten Commandments their unique significance. The Sabbath was placed in the Decalogue as a seal of the living God, pointing out the lawgiver and making known his right to, to rule. Thus, the Sabbath at the sign of the relationship, is a sign of relationship between God and his people, serving at the test, excuse me, as a test of their loyalty to him, from the signs of Zatina, Times, May 13, 1886. Okay, so we're running out of time right there. Let's pray. Our kind and wonderful Father, we thank you so much for this privilege we've had of reviewing these claims, some from reliable sources and some from sources that seem to be guided directly by the devil himself. Help us to understand our position, where we are in this world's history, in light of these things is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.